Here's Johnny. Hey, something, man. I, I, any people in church in here? Anybody that does church in here, go to church every Sunday? I need y'all to pray that my baby mom has sex with Charlie Sheen with no condom. <laughs> It don't make sense for somebody to take a shot to the coochie and get six hundred dollars a month. Can I at least get my oil changed sometimes? Hello, hello. Welcome to the Roger Uncensored Podcast. Today I got a special guest, Elijah the Barber. How you doing, sir, man? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. How you? Good, 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 man. I, I remember I met you at Cool J's open mic, man. Um, and I always realized you had like a different style, man. Um, it's not super goofy. You know what I mean? How would they like to put us in the box? It's just originally you, man. How did you creates your style for comedy, man. Like, how did it, how long did it take you to, to find a style in comedy and all that? Um, it took me probably probably a year and a half. Year and a half. Probably probably a year and a half because when I first started, like I had made that transition from doing poetry and doing hip hop music. To doing comedy so when i first started doing stand-up i was doing my jokes too fast like i had to learn how to slow it down and give the crowd time to you know take in the joke and then laugh and then you know uh slow down my transitions before i go into the next part or before you know i go into the next punchline. so it took me about a year and a half to find my comfortability um and work on my time and a lot of that came from just filming my sets studying the game tapes seeing what worked seeing what what hit um seeing what i liked and um putting uh more of myself into um my actual material you know what i'm saying i think in the beginning it was more of i'm trying to think of jokes i'm thinking of one-liners and stuff like that um, but then I just realized, uh, from the poetry to the music, one of the things I was good at was storytelling. So a lot of my comedy is storytelling. Um, I consider myself a storytelling comedian and I consider myself the king of barbershop talk comedy because I'm a real barber. And a lot of the things I'm talking about are things that people talk about in the barbershop. Um, and I take barbershop talk and I bring it to the stage. Like that's pretty much who Elijah the Barber is and what he's about taking real life experiences or, or, or real uh, scenarios and um, making art out of it. Because to me, it's not about being the gut busting funniest comedian. To me, a lot of times it's about the relatability. You know what I'm saying having something to say that people can connect with or that they can relate uh, with, regardless if it's your story or somebody else's story or a story that, you know, inspired you to create the material. Yeah, and I, I noticed that about you, man. Do you think it's easier to write from your real life than to create a story in comedy? I think it's easy to um I think it's easy to do both, but it's easier when the story is coming from a source of truth. You know mm. what I'm saying? Or, or a source of realness, you know what I'm saying? Um you know, it's so many different things that you can go through on a regular basis that you end up making material out of it without, you know, thinking uh, is going to become uh, material, just scenarios, just situations. If you can go to the store and you can see something in the supermarket that's hilarious. You know what I'm saying to you as comedians, our job is to take something that we believe is funny to us and convince other people that it's funny as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's really what we're doing. Like, we're taking something that we think of in our mind or something that we've seen, and it's funny to us, 
and now we have to convince a room full of strangers that it's funny also. And, and I, I've seen you from countless interviews. You said, man, your first time you mm. killed it. Like, yeah. how long did it take you to come up with that 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 set, or was you just swinging it off? The, you know what I mean? Just coming like an underground basketball player, just just say, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna come up with these set moves and just yeah. see if it stick." Or did you have that rolled out? So for me, um, I wrote for two years before I I stepped on stage. But what happened was for the for the first time I did it. I knew the guys who had the mic and they told me um, they told me I had two weeks to write 10 minutes worth of material. Mm. They were going to give me 10 minutes. And what I did was I wrote a whole it was Atlantic City. So I wrote a whole bit about Atlantic City, my experiences there uh, when I worked down there. because I really did work in Atlantic City and I took things that people from Atlantic City would be able to identify with. Like the Jitney, they got this this little mini bus called the Jitney, um, mm -hmm. that that people ride and stuff like this. So it was like little things about the area that I knew. If people from Atlantic City heard me talking about this, they would be able to connect and relate to it. I didn't use the whole ten minutes. I only used like five minutes of it, and then I I did uh, some pieces about my kids and my in laws and stuff like that. And um, nobody gave me the light. You know, I just I, I didn't want to go too long. So the first time I went on stage, it was like you ever see like the movies where somebody goes on the stage and like the whole crowd gets blacked out. Like that's how I felt. It felt like I was in the room by myself. And then as I heard the laughs, the room start lighting up in different areas. So um I did like five fifteen, five thirty, something like that. So from the first performance of it being filmed and me knowing the material that I did, I start working on my timing. I start working on my timing. I start studying my my sets to know, okay, I could say these two jokes or these three jokes within this time. I could say this joke within this time. If somebody says, hey, we're going to give you seven minutes, I know in seven minutes I can say this much material or, or I can say these particular jokes. If somebody says, you know, you got 10 minutes, you got 15 minutes. Like at the end of the day, stand-up comedy is math. You know what I'm saying? And once you understand that, and you trust in your material and you get comfortable and, and more familiar with, with your own material. Um, honestly, I feel like you, you, you become a walking cheat code. You know what I'm saying? I feel like and you become I, a walking cheat code. Yeah, I, I feel you on that because it's feel like if anybody ever played basketball, it's like you got to see the first shot go in just to get the confidence. So that laugh, that them couple laughs just boosts you up where you're like, damn, mm -hmm. like you're like Super Mario. You know when Super Mario will eat that mm -hmm. mushroom? He's become yeah. bigger, you know what I mean? Boop, and he levels up, you know what I mean? So I, that's why I feel like it uh, for comedy. Them them laughs are important, man, to, to help the set, to make you yeah. feel comfortable. For, you know what I mean? This is yeah. me. Uh, I don't know for everybody. Yeah. But, man, who, who is Elijah the Barber, man, And right now, man? Who is Elijah the Barber? Um, Elijah the Barber is a real barber. Um, South Jersey. Um, been cutting like 22, going on 23 years in the shop, and a man of many talents. Uh, like I said, I do poetry, I write music, I, clearly, I do comedy. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I'm, I'm a person who likes to bring people together. Um, I'm a promoter, so you know, I'm not just a, a, a comedian. Um, and I think that's what makes me a little more uh, different than the average comedians, especially the up and coming ones, because um, I have a different ambition, I have a different motivation. I'm fine with uh, branding and marketing myself and pushing myself, promoting myself. But at the same time, I'm not really big on being like the superstar celebrity type uh comedian i mean whatever happens happens me i like to be more behind the scenes i like putting together uh shows i like giving people opportunities and um i like putting together the events and people uh enjoying themselves at the events that they attend so it's a little it's a little more complex with me than just i'm a up and coming comedian that's grinding trying to you know trying to do you know my thing my mentality is um i'm humble and grateful for any opportunity that's given to me 
and present it to me, but I have no problem with uh creating my own opportunity. So, you so pretty saying? much you're like almost like the master P of comedy because you want to still produce your shows, you still want to have a a lineup, you want you want to produce shows, you want to do, you know what I mean? You want to have it to produce shows also. You don't want to just put yourself in the box of being a comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm fine with like I'm fine with playing the background to a certain extent. Like we just did a show in Carolina and we've done several shows in different and different cities. When I first started throwing comedy shows, I started in Dover, Delaware. We did two two comedy shows in Dover, Delaware. We did one in Wilmington, Delaware. Um this year we did one in Mesquite, Texas. I mean not Mesquite in um uh yeah, it was Mesquite. I'm thinking Mansfield. We did Mesquite, a show in Mesquite, Texas in February. We were in Rochester, New York this year. Uh, like I said, we were just in Charlotte. This Charlotte show was the first show. And we do them in Jersey all the time because I'm from Jersey. But um, I didn't start doing my sh my comedy shows in Jersey. I started I started uh, in Delaware. But this, the show in Charlotte was the first comedy show that I've thrown as a promoter um, outside of any special that I've done where... I made myself, um, I made my, it's the first show I did outside of Jersey where I made myself the headliner. Mm. And it was a challenge because it's like, usually when we go out of town, usually I host like Rochester. I was hosting Texas. I was hosting when we started in, in, in uh, um, in Delaware, you know, I was hosting all of those three Delaware shows I was hosting. So to go somewhere like North Carolina, Charlotte, and headline where you know these people don't know who I am. You know what I'm saying I mean I had some friends and family that was out there, but for the most part, the bulk of these people don't know who I am, and it was a sold out show. So that was that was a great accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? That was a great accomplishment. So, like I said, I'm fine with I'm fine with playing the background, but I'm also if I gotta take the lead, like if I got if I gotta be Jordan, I'm fine with being Jordan, but I'm okay with being Phil Jackson as well. You know what I'm so saying? What 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 is that coming from your upbringing of Knowing I could play multiple roles, I don't gotta be the guy. Does that come from your upbringing, or you just you learned that? Well, I was doing, like I said, I was doing when I was doing music and all of that stuff. I was already performing and all of that, so that's where the stage presence and comfortability and all of that came from. Um, from two thousand, uh, from two thousand twelve to two thousand sixteen. I had uh, a tattoo in a hip hop magazine. So I was doing a lot of traveling for the magazine. I was going to a lot of conventions. I was doing a lot of networking. I had to do interviews and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. because I had to be in that type of world, um, it prepared me for when I do my own interviews, you know, podcast interviews and all of that stuff. So the media, talking to the media, understanding media, understanding, uh, you know, what to say, what not to say, things like that. I had experiences in that field from 2016 um, all the way to, honestly, I would say last year, I had, uh, I was a, a battle rap league owner and I mm. own five different battle leagues. You know, it was a battle in uh, 2020 where it went viral when White Bull said the N-word, got punched in the face, whatever. Um that happened on my God, league. That happened on my league. Um, so I was booking battle rappers for years, and when I tell you that world is tough because you got to convince two people with egos that they need to basically step in the ring and and battle each other and disrespect each other, and then you got to deal with you know. Uh, the payment situation. Oh, well, first you got to convince them to battle each other. Then you got to convince them, uh, you know, come to agreements on on the money. Then you got to promote it, and then you it's, it's like so much that was going into it. So by the time we were getting to the end of things, I wanted to to fall back because I felt like it was just too much negative energy involved with that, and I wanted to to head another direction. And I had the passion for comedy. I wrote comedy for two years before I actually tried it. I tried it and, you know, I just kept going with it. But the experiences I had in other businesses and other things before now prepared me for battle rap. Because booking comedians is way easier. It's way easier to book a comedian. Hey, listen, I want to book you. This is what's in the budget. This is how much time. This is the date. They show up. You let them know who they going after, who they going before, how much time. 
and, and, and you make sure you do good business and it is what it is. It's a it's a much smoother um situation for me. You know what I'm saying? Um with comedy, I feel as though um there are opportunities that I wish I would have had or, or or that you know would come my way. Um I've reached out to certain promoters um to try to get bookings at certain venues and it's a bunch of jumping through hoops and stuff like that. And it's just like, I look at it like if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. If now it's not the time, now it's not the time. I'm not one of these guys who's going to sit around bitter and be saying, Oh, nobody's messing with me, making all these excuses and complaining about people not booking them or this not happening. Like you got to sometimes create your own opportunities. And, and me, I don't worry about if I get booked or not because I could book myself and, through um, booking myself and investing in myself and treating myself like a brand, that's how a lot of these doors and other opportunities, you know, come about. You know, we had a sold out show this weekend in Charlotte. We made a post on Facebook. You know, we had a sold out show. Next thing you know, we're getting phone calls like, hey, uh, such and such has a birthday party looking for a comedian. You know, you're going to be available. I see you doing your thing. So, you know, you never know what opportunities are going to come your way. You know, you never know who's watching. So how important is networking in, to you in comedy, man? How important do you think the networking is, man? I, I think networking is very important. Networking is probably one of the most important things you can do if you expand, if you plan on expanding your brand and what it is that you're trying to do, you know? Um, some people don't, some people just focus on trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? They focus on trying to be funny or they focus on, the fact that they feel as though they're funny, but they're focusing on trying to make as much money from this as they can, or you just got those who are just opportunists. They just want to, you know, they want to jump on everything that's moving. And, you know, to a certain extent, you, you, you kind of have to do that. But when you put in a certain amount of work, you get to a certain point where certain things you're just not going to do. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, like it's certain places that I'm not going to perform at. Like mm. not at this stage, not like like at this stage in my career, because I've been putting in work all these years and, and, and I know where I'm trying to go. Certain certain opportunities I'm not going to jump on just because it's an opportunity presented to me. It's been certain gigs that I've been offered and I had to turn down. You know, I've done gigs um, for free that ended up working out in my favor. I've you know, done gigs that I got paid for that was definitely worth it. I've done gigs that I got paid for that was that was like I got paid for this. This was cool, but I'll never, you know, perform for this person again or perform for for uh you know this company again. Um, I got the chance to open up for 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 legends in comedy. I got opened up for Joe Tory in August. I've opened up for Cool Bubba Ice at North Jersey. Like I've I've um I competed on this um. They were auditioning in Merlin for the uh, TV show Laughing My Butt Off, which something happened with the footage from that. But I got to meet the legendary Miss Tina Graham, um, as well as other up and coming comedians and, and, and other vets um, at that audition. So, you know, comedy networking has been great. Even with the show we just did in Charlotte, it was a comedian from um, originally from Jersey, but now she's by way of Riley Dawn, Miss Chit Chat. I met her in a, in a comedy chat and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, who, who, any comedians in Charlotte area? She was like, Hey, I'm in Raleigh dorm. I'm two hours away. I said, look, we're doing a show in Charlotte. Like send me some clips. She sent me some clips. I thought she was funny. I booked her. I booked her. We knew some mutual people. She heard good things about me. I heard good things about her. We did the show this past weekend. The show went well. And she said, Hey, look, I got three rooms in Raleigh dorm. We're going to talk. I'm going to bring you down here. So this is why networking is important because you create an opportunity for somebody else. You don't know what opportunity that can create for you, but you don't create opportunities for other people with expectations of them doing the same in return for you because everybody's not like that. If everybody mm -hmm. moved like that, a lot of 